Hey guys, welcome to BJ Tech News, episode 18. Um, within this episode, we're going to talk about customizing uh, the custom setting INI as well as the boot INI file for the MDT. Uh, there's a lot of property references that you could use. As you can see, there's several of them that you could use during your custom settings INI file to customize your your deployment even further than what the default settings are. Um, the way that you set that stuff up is you right click on your deployment share, go to properties, go to rules, and by default you get all this right here. This is just an extra add-on. This is another property that you could use. It changes the name of the of the dialog box when you're deploying uh, your image as well as your uh, applications to um, using the you know using the MDT. So by default, this is what you get, as well as the Bootstrap INI file. Uh, the only thing you, you would get is this right here that's highlighted. This is something added. So uh, I had uh, I had a friend that said, "Hey, how do you you know what settings do you use to uh, customize your custom settings INI file and as well as your Bootstrap right now?" I, I basically said, "You know, there's a lot of properties um, that you could use. It's up to you. It's just it's just the way that is." It's just the way you want to, you know, the way that you want to customize it. It's up to you. Um, the location of those two INI files are actually located in your deployment share and inside your control folder. So these are the two folders, or two files, I mean. So, what I like to use, what I normally use is, um, I normally use this. So I'm just going to brief it. Um, this right here is by default. This is by default right here. OS install yes. Um, hitting yes because you do want to install the operating system on it. Uh, I skip the welcome dialog box. I give a username, a user ID, and a domain. I uh, a user domain and a user password. This information is if you don't provide this information, you get the first dialog box prompting you for. Um, a username and a password as well as the domain to uh, initiate the start or the connection for your deployment share okay uh, if you want to bypass that you don't want to enter it this is how you set it up so you don't have to you know touch that anymore uh, then you have your skip deployment type task sequence you know I don't want to pick the task sequence I skip that stuff Sometimes I hit no, I probably want to pick the task sequence. Uh, skip the deployment type, it doesn't matter what deployment type, I'm only doing one type of deployment type and I know what it is, so I hit yes. Uh, skip domain, if by any chance you want to automate the, the process of adding your machine into Active Directory, this is how you do it. You skip the portion that acts uh, do you want to add this to the domain controller? You say, you know, I add this variable. Then I add another uh, another property, which is don't join domain. I assign it to my domain controller. Domain admin is the administrative account that will give me access to add that machine to Active Directory. Domain admin domain, and then the password. Okay. Uh, skip applications. Hit no. The no basically. It will, it will prompt you the list of all the applications that you want to push out. Skip summary. I don't want to see that. Hit no. Skip user data. Hit no. I, I hit yes. Uh, yes for the skip summary. Skip computer name. Yes. Now, a lot of people would hit no, and they would like to get prompt because again, they want to you know name their computer a different way. Uh, in my case, I like to hit yeah, yes. I like to skip the computer name, and then uh, for the computer name, I uh, I use the property uh, reference as OSD computer name, and I equal to NY, which is the prefix of the office, and then percent serial number percent, which would take the serial number of the computer for the name. 
Uh, skip locale selection, yes. I skipped the bit locker. Time zone, the time zone is mostly done um, when you're, I normally configure the time zone here during the operating system portion. actually yes my task sequence I normally do the when I do the unintended XML for the task sequence I actually configure the time zone within here so I really don't have to uh, worry about that I normally configure it here, and you know I put the Eastern time zone. I believe it is. I put it there, and I save the, I save the the unintended XML, and then when it's deploying, that stuff is answered. Okay. Um, next thing I do, you know, to customize it even more, I give it a nice little name. Uh, WSUS server now. If by any chance you activate it, um, these two parts within your task sequence, which is Windows updates, when you're when you set this variable right here inside your custom settings ini file, you're actually telling the computer to actually go into your WSUS server in house. So you probably have it configured um, that you want certain security updates and certain stuff to be pushed out to the machine rather than going to um, outside the network and gathering all that all those updates and then pushing it down to the machine and downloading everything if you already got it downloaded on your WSUS it's a little easier okay uh, user look user data location I you know you can delete that don't worry about that uh, skip app upgrades I normally hit yes skip capture uh, I normally hit yes on this. I put yes. I will put yes on that. If I'm not really doing a capture sequence on it, I wouldn't bother. Skip administrative password. This right here is taken care of on the um, on the task when you're creating the task sequence, so you don't have to worry about that. And the last thing is skip the product key because the product key again it depends how you're working or uh, if you have a KMS server which is key management server on your infrastructure the that's taken care of so you don't really have to worry about that okay so that takes care of what I like to do again uh, this website right here um, I'm, I post it up in my blog but it has several 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 reference properties that you guys could just Manipulate and take advantage of it and customize your custom settings INI file to to the T. Now the other file that's within MDT that you can also customize is also the Bootstrap INI file. The way I customize that is really simple. An example would be this guy right here. Um, by default, you get this stuff right here, so you don't have to worry about this. You can customize the dialog box again, and I like to do this one more time into the Bootstrap. Uh, to skip the skip the welcome, I give it a user ID, a user domain, and a user password. This, this information is again for authenticating to the deployment share. So this account right here gives me access to this. So I don't need to get prompt to connect to my deployment share. And that's about it. That's that's it. That's that's about it with the custom settings I and I find the Bootstrap. Um, again, it's up to you. It's it depends how you want to customize it, and uh, hope you hope that you guys enjoy this episode, and I catch I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.